Good morning, everybody. I hope you're alive and well and uh, not overdosed with all this Joomla Joomla stuff during the last couple of days. Um, suffering from Joomla burnout and all the technical sessions. Uh, this will be a little different because I'm just a beginner. I just recently started with Joomla and um, I'm going to try to relate my experiences with this. Uh, do you occasionally feel more like this on the left hand side or more like on the right hand side? <laughs> this is where we're at and this is where we want to go, right? That's kind of like what I feel uh, right now too. A little bit about myself, um, I have worked a lot as a commercial photographer and also as a uh, database application developer and started way back in the early days of computers. Um, most of my computer work has been with PCs and then local air networks, not really on the internet side, only during the last six years uh, did I start working with websites, uh, designing websites and stuff like that. But uh, basically, basically, I'm kind of a user-friendly computer nut who started commuti computing in 1979 and who loves to teach human beings about computers on one side and computers about human beings, which is the problematic part. Um, I lived in a couple of few different places, like I was just telling over there. Uh, I spent a year as an exchange student in Alaska. That was my introduction to the rest of the world. I spent a year in France teaching English to French high school kids. I spent seven years in Omaha, Nebraska, and seven years in West Michigan. And I currently live in Ladenburg, which is close to Heidelberg and Mannheim in Germany. A uh, couple introductory remarks and some questions. Uh, who of you are beginners with Joomla? I'm, I'm a little scared about this. Okay, so I hope all of you other people are people that are working on the documentation team that is preparing the documentation for beginners, right? What I'm uh, going to talk about refers to primarily uh, to, to Joomla 3, 3.x. Uh, at some point I decided that didn't make any sense to start with 1.5 or 2.5 or anything in between. So I literally started ju with Joomla 3.2. If you have any questions, you can always interrupt me. This, uh, this is a small group and we may have a couple of minutes at the end too for questions. Uh, even though I have the feeling the questions are gonna go more the other way, I'll be asking the questions. This whole thing is a, um, well, let's call it a therapeutic process. It's a, about relationships. And we have the relationship between the, uh, well, the geeks on this side, the programmers or the Joomla developers, we have the computer on the other side and we have the human beings, the end user basically. And um, now that we have our screen a little bit differently. These relationship need, relationships need to be developed and they can be enhanced and we can actually work on this. When I started out, this was my first computer basically a box with a built-in keyboard. It was called an Apple II Plus. It had a disk drive with it. That was a great improvement over the cassette decks before. It had 100K storage, 140K storage. And this monitor had uh, 16 lines on the screen, green on black. It had 40 characters across the concept concept of proportional characters didn't exist, not not on the computer end uh, anyway, and um, it um, it was totally new to me. I had some interesting experiences along the way. These days, though, 
I, uh, when I teach uh, old people to use computers, which I uh, sometimes do when I put on my teacher's hat, I tell people that uh, up here on the right-hand side of the monitor, that's a very important point where you go like this in the morning before you turn it on, and where you, may, where you maybe say hello to. That improves the relationship for the whole day. One of my first experiences with um, this computer, though, was one evening I was sitting with a friend of mine in front of the computer and all the parts and pieces that we had unpacked. There was a, one of the programs that was with it was a game. It was an adventure game, and it was a text-based adventure game because there were no graphics and uh, no sound. It was just simply text and typing and answering questions. And we got to a point where we were totally stuck. Nothing worked. We couldn't go forwards and backwards. And this, and this guy was sitting uh, beside me and eventually said, well, why don't you just type in fuck you? And I looked at the computer. I looked at him. I looked at the keyboard and on the disk drive. That didn't help either. So I ended up typing in fuck you. And the instant I pressed enter, the answer that came back to me was a question, my place or your place? <laughs> and that was when my relationship with computers started. That, that kind of made it clear to me that on the other side of this box, somewhere there in the distance, there was a computer uh, programmer who, who was a programmer and had a sense of humor, and he thought about what his users might experience. I found that very interesting. <coughs> Last year, on December 14th, I made a decision. This decision was a, a decision to go basically uh, internet only, not the old development stuff that I used to do for a lot of uh, years. And it entailed a decision uh, to, to become a content management system specialist. In this process, I tried to decide on a system, on Drupal, WordPress, Joomla, and a few other things. And I looked at, at different ones, and I looked at the communities. That was very important to me, because I was used to a community back in the States when I was doing a lot of Visual Fox Pro programming where people cooperated with each other, where they talked to each other, where they met, where they shared experiences, where they shared code. And then I had this moment of, first time in my life, of utter culture shock when I came back to my own country, to Germany, and experienced German programmers. They didn't talk to each other. They were scared of letting somebody else know what they were doing and how they were doing it. And it was uh, something that, that uh, was very difficult for me. So part of my decision on uh, whether to use um, this or that or that other uh, uh, CMS system was based on the community around it. And one of the things that I happened to, uh, to me in the process was that I looked around and I read um, what I could read, what I could find in the internet. I listened to podcasts. For example, Peter Bue, who, who's here at the conference too, uh, does this uh, Joomla Beat podcast. Who of you knows that? Have you watched that? That's where I first found out about the details of Joomla and who to talk to and where to find things. It was very interesting for me. But after I made the decision to, uh, to go with Joomla and Joomla only, I made the second decision that was to make the right decisions in the process of learning Joomla. And I'm still working on that. Why I made all this, uh, why I did all this decision making was simply because I wanted to change my life a little bit. I wanted to work more in a team rather than by myself in front of a computer in, in a box to a cubicle where I didn't see any other people or I didn't talk to other people. I wanted to get away from the PC programming and switch to the server si side of life, basically. 
And I wanted to be able to do my work uh, anywhere, like on an island that has internet, or in a train, or on a plane, or at home, or at away from home. Just be more independent of all the infrastructure that I had developed in my office, which I was way too much dependent on. And why Joomla? First, because of the community, and, and second, also because I had the impression that it was something fairly stable, and it, was, it had release cycles that you could count on a little bit anyway. And it seemed like there was a team that had a plan, which I heard at the conference here too now, that this is in fact the case. And it was quite different from the impression that I had, for example, from uh, Drupal, which I had worked with a little a bit too. Some of the uh, early strategies uh, for me were, and, and that's what I would tell other people too, that start from scratch. Um, take some of the, your old websites, things that you developed yourself uh, with Dreamweaver or any other tools, and then try to put that into Joomla, which basically, of course, needs to be a redesign then. And uh, it teaches you very quickly, though, where the limits are, the limits of what you're used to and how this works in Joomla or how it doesn't work in Joomla. And um, consequently, you can spend a lot of time trying to find those limits and solve the problems that you encounter along the way. Actually, a process that, that is a basic um, programming process is also the order of doing things. You start out, for example, with installing a new Joomla site, uh, the basic Joomla in, uh, installation. Then you modify things, you, you add features, you add things that you want to do. Uh, along the way, you get pr frustrated. Then you get a little more frustrated. And then you figure out what you really need to solve. You, you get to the point where you can uh, uh, verbalize your problem. And then you go out to solve it. And solving it is like uh, looking for answers with Google, um, finding videos on YouTube, or looking at the uh, Joomla extension directory. And it helps if you only try to solve one problem at a time. And then there's a real uh, interesting German word uh, um, that's called to facettle yourself. Don't do that. What that means is basically you start looking at a, uh, look at looking at a problem. While you're doing this, you, do, you discover a second interesting problem and a third interesting problem. You try to solve all these along the way. And at the end, you don't know where you started uh, with and what you, you don't remember what you really wanted to solve. But when you've gone through these steps here, you just simply go back to number two and start over again and keep going through the, through the, through the cycle till, till you're done or till you're tired. And then there's this uh, creature called bugs. There's one thing that you have to aware of uh, when we're talking about bugs. They come from somewhere. And uh, bugs are always little insects that we previously put in ourselves. You have to think about that. I heard this little piece of advice here a couple minutes ago. Uh, when you write documentation, the less you write, the less you have to translate later. If you put in the bugs first, of course, you have to ta take them out eventually. You can al also go to Wikipedia and find explanations for all this, like bugs arise from mistakes and errors made by people. I thought that was interesting. And they cause all kinds of problems. But it's really not a big problem. All we need to do is we just need to, ta need to take them out again. Of course, as we heard in the checklist session a little while ago, we could have a check mark somewhere, uh, did we take out all the bugs or did we make sure we didn't put them in to start with. 
when you're starting out with Joomla as a new user, you see all these things that you can do with it. You, s you hear about templates from all kinds of vendors. I think it's important that you start out with basic Joomla, not with any add-ons, but you have to understand the basics of Joomla, the template that comes with Joomla, in this case in version 3.x. Uh, you have to get to know Protostar, and uh, find out really where you uh, can control this monster. And one of the biggest issues that I had in the beginning was I didn't find this part again. I looked, uh, I, I found myself sol trying to solve problems like how do I put a logo up here in the top left corner of my screen? I looked at all the module positions and all the places where I could assign module pol positions like in, 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 uh, to articles or categories or whatever, but I couldn't get to that one spot, the top left corner. And it took me a day and a half till I figured out again that I had to go to the template manager and I had to go there to the point where, it's, uh, where I can uh, install a logo and then it simply worked. And the most problematic corner of my, my screen real estate was that top left corner because either I had a name there and I didn't know how I got, uh, got it in there. It simply was because at some point I had s said the description is uh, this title uh, and it was there and I didn't know how it got there and how, c how I could get rid of it because I wanted to have a logo instead. So this is uh, really one of the core issues that I ran into, the ability to find things or find them again after I had dif discovered them once. But I'll get back to that later. If you're really new to uh, Joomla, it can also in, uh, happen that you uh, install a module or, or an extension of some sort, and then you go and try to, try to use it. And you can't for the, uh, you just simply can't find it until you finally discover there's a little notice here that pointed me the right way. It said, you must download and install the plugin slideshow params. Well, I had just done that. And then I discovered it was disabled here. And uh, as, as, a, as a programmer, uh, I have absolutely no understanding for something like this, that the user has to have that kind of user experience. You install an extension, and Joomla immediately decides that you really didn't want it anyway. So I guess um, I'll sign up for the bug squad now and, and help improve the produ product. And um, I suggest that you do that too, especially when you realize that these things are still in Joomla in the Joomla installation process. Another uh, area was localhost. How do I get a website on my local computer when I don't wanna want to work online? And I don't know about you guys, but I had terrible problems with that, and th that resulted in trying to do it seven different ways and then just working online and delaying the problem till after the conference because I figured maybe uh, if Jay and Bilanda find somebody uh, to tell me how to do that. But you can use WAMP and you can, you can use Jam, uh, uh, Gzamp and you can even, and, th and that kind of surprised me, you can even on an Android tablet get it to work, which I have not yet, but I know that it does work. Or you can simply uh, work online and that was an interesting exercise for me too because now I work with my clients and they see what, they do, uh, what I'm doing, they can look into it. It's a different relationship and it's not for everybody, but it works well and it doesn't have any versioning problems. Because if you go online, you, you have a site uh, that is live and people are using it and you take it offline to work on it and then put it back on, what happens with the discrepancies with stuff that users put in in the meantime? It's real complicated quick to think about what happens to new users that have registered or whether you take the, the uh, database offline and then back online too or not or where things go wrong in this uh, process of going back and forth. Uh, just a question for me. Uh, how, how many of you are uh, 
developing online. How many of you are uh, working local host? How many of you do one or the other, depending on the situation? OK. That's interesting to know. Of course, it's, um, it's really important to get involved and, and listen. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do to learn. There are video casts, there are podcasts, there are jugs, user groups. Uh, if you're lucky, uh, uh, you have some of those close to, you, to you, uh, where you live. Uh, the closest that I found for me were Frankfurt and uh, Freiburg, and driving two hours to a users group is, is a lot of uh, driving. So it would help if we had a few more. But there's also a lot of webinars and video trainings from vendors and um, um, people that put out um, extensions, and they do help a lot in the process. And again, there's this Joomla beat podcast from uh, Peter Buey, where initially I, I thought it was from Austria, but, but the, kind, uh, the, 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 the accent of the guy doing it didn't sound Austrian. It actually comes from Australia. And uh, what also helps is to, is to keep track of the names you hear, the product names, the, the names of people. Uh, if you keep hearing them again and again, then they're likely to be important and helpful or people that you might want to follow some way or another. In working with Joomla, actually not there, but before in other programming uh, settings, I uh, learned to use two monitors. And using several monitors is something really helpful when you're designing, uh, when, when you're working on your site on one computer and have a reference material on the other side or whatever. And you can use two computers. That's uh, fairly simple and useful. If you want to really impress your clients when they come to your office, then you use three computers or, uh, or three monitors or four monitors. Four monitors gets a little complica uh, complicated when you have glasses, especially when they're bifocals or very focal, and you find yourself doing exercises with your head trying to follow what's going on. One strange thing that happened to me strange as uh, uh, because it only happened to me when I started using uh, Windows 8.1, is the use of the windows and arrow keys. I don't know, how many of you are familiar with these combinations? Windows key, left arrow, right arrow, up and down. And how many of those people use several monitors? Well, then you should really look at this because the when, when you want to see two things side by side, scaling the windows and putting them in the right place takes way too much time. One click puts the active window to the left-hand side, windows key and left-hand arrow, and another window with uh, windows er key and right arrow uh, puts it right next to it with the rest of the screen, screen real estate. Two clicks instead of seven, eight, nine mouse moves to arrange things. And it lets you take it to the other monitor. One more click and you go to the next monitor. So it's a real helpful thing. It's just that nobody ever told me about this. It, I did a bunch of, uh, I do a lot of things with <coughs> lynda.com when I want to learn a new language or a new process or whatever. It's, it's a tremendous learning uh, site. And um, when I did some uh, checking on styling in Joomla with CSS, I looked at a video from Jen Kramer, who is a very good um, uh, trainer for CSS. And I had a another German uh, experience on aha erlebnis. Aha erlebnis is this thing that happens when suddenly something clicks, something works or uh, the light bulb goes on, basically. And uh, what I learned there is, is that uh, I could, uh, in, Joomla in Joomla also, very easily tweak the appearance of uh, what's on my screen using CMS, simply uh, going through the uh, element inspector of Chrome, for example. And you can do the same thing in Firefox, too, where I could uh, 
For example, look at this element up here. This is just three axes in this description field. But if you're new to Joomla and you know you put this in somewhere and you can't figure out where you got it from or where, how you put it in, because you're working on the back end, knit and not on the front end, um, you can look at an element here and very often you get the clues to where to find it. Here it says class site description. And just above, I even uh, see the, the file for the image that's up here. So looking around here often helps you get a clue as to where you need to go in the back end to find, to find it and where to make a change. This is the same view from Firefox now. Looks a little different, but basically it does the same thing. And it gives you the ability to turn properties on and off and make changes. And you can even take those changes later with cut and paste and just put them back in your website by putting it into the uh, CSS file, the appropriate CSS file, and putting it right on the bottom so it's the only thing that's active on the bottom of the stack. And it's an easy way to enhance your website. Maybe you might start uh, thinking about the question of whether it makes sense to do it that way or whether you should look at your whole CSS stru uh, structure and put it in a different place so it could be uh, more reusable. But the problem that I ran into again and, and again was this problem of how do I find things? How do I find things that I, uh, I didn't know where to do? Or how do I find things after I did them once, but it was three days ago and I couldn't remember where I, where I did it? So this problem can be partially solved by looking at the database. When we work at the back end, <coughs> We basically put in all kinds of parameters. We give answers to questions, we define parameters, and they somehow end up in the database, in the database behind Joomla, because everything that we do there basically, or almost everything, is stored in the database. So my idea was to think about the question of if we can do it one way, could we also do it the other way? Could we take the database and get clues there about where to do it on the front end or on the back end for the developer? And uh, the best tool that I found for doing that was simply to export the database and then look at the exported data. With uh, PHP, my, my admin, you get access to the database. Uh, when you're new to it, that kind of hits you in the face and you don't know what to do. But there is this export option that you can use to do an export in a whole bunch of different ways. And I found two of these, the C CSV and CSV for Excel, the most useful, useful ones. After doing the export, I can look at the file and I can, for example, with a simple t text editor, look at these three X's and find exactly where all this is. And my first clue here is that I see the name Protostar, so I can tell, okay, this is probably in the definition of the template, what I'm looking for, or what I'm trying to get rid of. If I look, the, look at the Excel version of the same thing, uh, I can also look, uh, look for those three X's, and I come to a certain cell. This here happens to be F556. Uh, I don't see the X's there, but there's not enough space to uh, show the whole context. If I look at the detail, I find the same detail here. And I can also see here I'm in a section of this whole database area where the templates are stored, or where the information about the templates are, uh, is stored. So I can also see there are four templates installed in the site at this point. The uh, Bees 3, the Heather, Protostar, and Isis. And uh, two of those are used for development, and two of those are used for the site itself. Had you seen that before? Who of you has exported the database to, to look at the contents or find things? Nobody? I, I saw that, but I've been looking at the database. 
You exported it and then ignored it. Yeah, yeah, of course you can do it too. And, and uh, there are all, all kinds of other SQL tools that you can use to look at the content or even uh, modify the content, like do a, uh, a search and replace type thing. Of course, it has to work afterwards too, so sometimes it's a little touchy subject. But um, in this data, no matter how we look at it, we can find a lot of things that we can recognize on the, on the back end later too, like here we have an ID number two, we have uh, uh, the alias of the um, article in this case it is, we have uh, all the descriptions and things that we put in, and we also have all the image information, the file names, even the directory structure that it's under, or things like float right, if an Im image is in the article, and positioned on the right-hand side of the article uh, portion of the screen. And this is the same that we normally see on our development screen. There's the ID number two, there's the, the alias, uh, also shows us that it's not in a ca categorized, uh, it's not categorized, and the title. So understanding this basic relationship between we work here in Joomla, but it really means that's just the, the place where we put the stuff in that goes into the database and that's where it resides and that's where we can find it too. And it's all basically just a big bucket in which the information is held and we can dissect it and look at it and look at it closer. And uh, if we're able to do that, also go into it with other tools. Well, my first thought was, uh, <coughs> what else can we do with this? On, during the first week, the week that I really intensively worked with Joomla, I, I looked everywhere for a documentation tool for something that would give me uh, the information of uh, what's in my website. What kind of extensions did I install? What kind of uh, uh, things did I put in? Did I, put in, uh, did I install different languages? Did I, uh, essentially it was stuff that, that would um, document my site and uh, would be something that I could uh, uh, use to compare my different sites and see what I did here, what I didn't do there, or where I could uh, generate documentation for my clients. And basically, just selectively taking information from the database to put it into a certain order or structure, it could even show things like menu structure right from the database. And uh, does anybody know if such extensions exist or with what name or what search word, keyword they could be found? I, c I come from an environment where this is standard procedure. I mean, you have a problem like this, you look at it and you dissect it, <coughs> make a little program out of it and you can reuse it. Maybe I'll have to t talk to some of the extension specialists I don't think it would be that hard. I can even with, uh, do it with my own pro old programming tools, but it wouldn't help somebody else that's deal, uh, dealing with Joom Joomla. So this is basically all the stuff that's in the database and that we can use. And um, when we're doing an export from the database, uh, we can even also do a selective export, also not, not, not export everything at the same time, and thus make the haystack sm smaller for the needles to find that we're trying to find in there. You used to use on my episode for the basic stuff. Right. On my plan is also to learn PHP and also learn that real well, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Now, there are also things that are not in the database. Some of those are things like uh, the, the CSS code that's in a separate file. Some of it uh, um, 
is things like um, um, various text files that are <laughs> that are installed with Joomla. Okay, this is interesting. I have my power on, but it's not getting through. And of course, there are all the document files and image files that are just somewhere in the uh, directory structure. And there are the uh, installed extensions and templates and libraries and language files. Those are, those are not in the database, but can be found elsewhere. And what's no, um, a few words about data in general. We have data. Most of the data that we have in Joomla is data that has to do with the system, with the installation, with the website itself. But there's also the, the data that comes from the user. In a standard in installation, that's mainly the user information, the, the registration stuff. And um, when we have other types of data that we, we can't want to collect from the user, like when the user is filling out forms or sending information or doing something like that. That needs to go somewhere else. It's a different kind of data. And if we have a lot of this stuff uh, and need different fields and different uh, content, then we need extensions like the community builder or other extensions that, or we need to simply enha enhance the database with extra fields that we can use. And of course, we need to understand what we're doing there. A discovery for me was also to realize that some of the th things w that we see in our extension manager or in our module manager uh, show up simply in the directory structure of the installation. Like this parallel uh, parallax CK a module or it's a, it's, it's a um, plugin that we use here actually shows up as a directory and uh, I found out that was a quicker way to find out what's installed in my site than looking through the Joomla back end. So what can help us neophytes uh, in our quest to learn Joomla? Um, very important is the courage, uh, courage to look at the database in detail. <coughs> of course, understanding uh, CSS is helpful. Uh, very helpful is the ability to verbalize our problem. To literally, uh, when we have a problem, sit down and figure out, well, what, what is my problem really? What, what is it? How can I look for solutions? How can I, uh, can I look for answers? How, I can, how can I ask someone or Google it? And sometimes it even helps us to take our problem and uh, just go running in the forest or riding a bike. Um, in the forest is actually where I solve most of my programming problems. A very important habit is uh, writing cheat sheets. And uh, basically writing down things that you did once and figured out how, to how they work. The older you get, the more helpful it gets us, but because short-term me memory gets to be more of a problem. And three days later, you sometimes just simply don't remember how you solved the problem. Basically, it's documentation for yourself um, in your own words, in your own language. And it can, can, can also uh, entail structural uh, representations that help you with the um, the structure of the site or menu structure and similar similar things. Where do you store that? Pardon? Where do you store that structure? Um, I have a couple of different ways of doing it. I use uh, Word documents because they're searchable and I can have formatted text in there. Often I use simple text files. And uh, one thing that I'll mention uh, a little later again, too, is I do screen printing. In certain spots, I see something. I don't write it all down. I just make a screen, uh, screen print section. Um, do you guys know Snagit, the program called Snagit? You can t take any portion of the screen or even scroll stuff that, that, that's beyond the end of the screen 
And I can then paste that into a Word document, make it smaller so it's not so big, and uh, it's a good reference for me to quickly go back to and find what I did or where I did it or where I had a little uh, reference to the particular issue. Yeah, I think that even makes a lot of sense to do that, not just for one person, then, but maybe having a group of people that work together and then do it that way. It's all a, a question of uh, a little bit of thinking ahead of time and doing some design thinking to make that work well. Um, yeah. Purely for myself, I have a directory where I have all these. Yeah. I like the idea, but I can't search those. It works better on my computer where I can search for words, where I can search for terminology. So we m mentioned all these things like PHP MyAdmin uh, or Akiba Backup, uh, which to me is a fascinating pro uh, product because it's written by one person and it, it got real good. Everybody's using it. Nobody is trying to do the same thing, basically. And it's only one person, which is a little bit risky, but. What's the question about open source? Yeah. Yeah, at this point in time, it's not a problem anymore. It's big enough, so there, there are enough people working with it and around it, and it is open source. But uh, when we're talking about these tools, that's where I also got into snag it here, a screen measuring tool is important for me, where I can count pixels. I can see what kind of real estate I have for formatting my pictures, for uh, my images, or galleries, or whatever. I had interesting experiences with the uh, search for image galleries, sliders. Initially, I didn't even know what the difference was between a gallery and a slider. And um, I didn't really know what, what, why re what my requirements were. And only sitting down and thinking about it brought up all kinds of requirements. Like uh, I need to, where, where do images need to go on my site? Do they go in a module position or do they go into inside an article? Uh, can a gallery have several instances of itself in, a, in, a, in the same article? Can I format the images? Can I s do they scale? Do they stretch or uh, stretch or overlap? And um, how do they deal with uh, the uh, speed problems involved of putting in, in putting up a gallery of 100 images? And the user tries to load the gallery and then loads and loads and loads and loads. And there are lots of approaches to solving these problems. One real big problem for me was also the display of metadata, the stuff that is inside a JPEG file, for example, like the, the, the title of the image or the, uh, the author or photographer or uh, things that somebody else can put inside the picture so I don't, ha don't have to do it when I put it on the website. And there are very few. Uh, gallery programs or extensions that actually do that. Or the ability to simply take a directory, set up a, g a gallery for a directory, and then put a bunch of pictures in it, or replace those pictures next month with another bunch without having the work of doing the gallery ag again. In this um, process, I also um, had the crazy idea that, that uh, people should be able to vote on pictures. I have a nonprofit organization that I work uh, for where they actually want to each put in a vote and then the best uh, voted picture g gets to do something or gets into a certain pile or does an exhibit or whatever. And the mechanism to do this kind of voting, I'm not talking about starring it, like one star, two stars, or three stars, but collecting the, the votes and one only per person that does the voting, and then um, getting this information consolidated and published again the other way as a result. And I found it very difficult to fi uh, find uh, answers to these problems. 
menu structures, you have a basic menu structure in Joomla and you have a lot of extensions that you can use or part of a template uh, vendor situation, you have a structure that does menus for you. But menus, uh, when I first uh, started with Joomla, I tried to put a menu together before I started put, uh, adding my articles. And we still have to do everything backwards in Joomla. It could be solved, that problem. I'm not sure yet how, but it could be solved. One of the things that I would uh, suggest to new users of uh, Joomla is to invest in your future. And what I mean by that is look at good extensions instead of looking at free extensions. And when you're looking at one, of course, you look at the demo, you try uh, to figure out who produced this, whether this is a single person or one that's been around or whether that add-on works for all current versions. And you look closely at the documentation. And when you're done with that, then maybe you just buy the expensive version because that's, uh, that's the one that has the best documentation or that actually is the best. And you learn it inside out. But um, free extensions are something that I stay clear of, unless I understand their business, uh, their business model and see how they make their money. Because if it's just free and they do it in their spare, uh, spare time, they are not likely to be people that are around when I have a problem six months down the road or two, two years down the road. For hosting Joomla sites, I, f I found that that makes a lot of sense to look at Joomla specialized hosting sites. I mean, you can put it on just about any provider system, but um, I had very ex uh, good uh, experience with cloudaccess.net, and they also do a lot of good webinars. And uh, the same applies to SiteGround. Uh, neither of them are in Germany, which would be helpful for me because I'm operating in Germany, but that's not a big issue these days anymore either, except that Germans prefer really their sites to be hosted in Germany, even though the NSA gets them anyway. When I evaluate vendors, I look at who they are, how long they've been around, whether their offerings are current, what kind of support they have, uh, what time zone they're in is sometimes important too, and also the language they speak when you call them. And of course, whether they can be called in the first place. One of our problems in Germany uh, is that there are a lot of companies that you can't get out of outside of their normal working hours, and even the then you get into a lot of computer recordings and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll look at the cost, but as I said before, if they're free, I kind of ignore them. And I look at whether they appear in the JED. I found a lot of stuff that I didn't find in the JED. I found through Google searches. But if I can verify that they are in the EJ, uh, JED, that's helpful because then I know somebody has looked at it and it's something that has a little better potential than <laughs> if it doesn't appear appear there. I had one very bad experience with my search for galleries. I found this product called High Slider, and in the description it sounded real good. It did a lot of the things I was looking for, and optically the results were real good. I, g I was a little surprised when I realized that I had to install the program on my computer and that was after I had purchased it because I thought it was good. O and then, then I put together a real nice gallery. It worked, f it worked great and it uh, looked great. The final part was trying to make it to work in Joomla and that's when, when it stopped working. It was just impossible to get it installed in Joomla. And uh, then I looked in the JED and I found out it wasn't even listed there. I wasn't quite sure whether that wasn't anymore or why not, or uh, I knew that they had reduced the JED to about half the size. 
and weeded out a lot of stuff. And later I found out, weeks later I found out that what actually had happened was this thing generated a plugin. And it took like 45 mini minutes to, to generate one gallery. And then you had to install that a, as a plugin. And I never ha uh, figured out that I had to wait for, for 45 minutes to see even what came out of it. I thought the thing had just hung. So I learned a little bit to do things on a slightly diff different order. And this is an example of what I found later where I could actually do all the things that I wanted to do. It's a gallery by a German guy that allows to uh, do nice overviews and thumbs and scales the images and allows 100 pi uh, pictures to be called up and called up instantly, basically only uh, without long la waiting times, and that allow to have information added to the pictures out of the JPEGs, out of the metadata. So one more word of wisdom, or actually two. Besser stümperhaft begonnen als perfekt gezögert. For those of you who will understand it, uh, it's a real useful motto. Uh, it means uh, it's better to do, so, uh, to do something stümperhaftly, if you understand that, which means in some sort of an incompetent way, than to purposely hesitate or pr procrastinate. And the other one that really comes, uh, uh, comes from a good friend of mine, that uh, is kaum macht man's richtig, schon geht's. The minute you do something right, it actually works. Think about that. The thing that I learned mo most about what I had to learn was simply thinking, learning to think Joomla. To think Joomla, to, li to live Joomla, to like Lu uh, Joomla, and not to fight it kind of like a, a foreign language. I had all these questions that I started out with, and I'm not gonna read those to you, you have them in your conference materials. And I still have a lot of open questions, and one of the things uh, that uh, I decided, or that we decided now, somebody's helping me with, with this now, is that we're starting a Joomla users group in the area of Heidelberg and Mannheim. Thank you very much.